Hi everyone, Matt here from CarWow and I've got an interesting video for you today because I've got two performance cars, Audi RS3 here, a Seat Leon Cupra Art Estate over here. This Audi is about £9,000 more than that car, but I want you to decide which you think is the best value for money by watching the entire video, then at the end you're going to vote to cast your opinion, I'll of course give my opinion. And in order to do that, we're going to compare their performance. Once it's going, this thing is mental. Critique their design. I really don't like it much. See what they're like inside. Sliding about all over the place. Take them for a drive. <laughs> and of course, I'm going to poke them with a stick. Perfecto mundo. Now, before we get into that, make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our cool videos and hit that bell icon to turn your notifications on. Otherwise, you won't be alerted if we make a new upload. You don't want that. The great thing about the RS3 is that it's the cheapest way to get your hands on Audi's awesome 2.5 litre five cylinder turbo. And here it is in all its glory. They kind of know that you're going to be showing it off to your friends because look, the bonnet has a gas strut, so you can prop it up nice and easy. Actually, the normal A3 gets that. But what it doesn't have is this engine cover, which has the red elements on it. Yeah, I know it's plastic, but look at this. The intake manifold is actually powder coated. Lovely jubbly. Oh, I forgot about the performance, didn't I? So 400 horsepower and 480 newton meters of torque. The Cooper R has a two liter four cylinder turbo with 300 horsepower and 400 newton meters, but this one has been tuned by apt. It only costs 500 quid, but it adds an extra 50 horsepower, so 350. Thing is, it just doesn't look quite as good as the engine bay of the Audi. I mean, look at this inlet manifold. It's just horrible plastic, like it's been made out of old microwave cartons, and there is no gas strut to hold this up. In fact, yeah, look. You can just drop it on yourself. <laughs> now let's compare how these engines actually sound, starting with the Seat. Now for the RS. 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 Rev it! I should point out that this RS3 isn't fitted with the optional sports exhaust. With that, it sounds even better. But which car do you think sounds the best? Click up there on the pop-out in the top right-hand corner of the screen to cast your vote. Is it this RS3 or is it the Seat Leon Cooper R? I want to see how quick these cars can get from 0 to 60 miles an hour. So I've got my specialist timing gear up here. I'm going to launch this RS3 first. And to do that, it's dead simple. I have to put the drive select into dynamic press and hold the stability control. I'm going to turn it off for maximum traction. Gearbox in, sports mode, and basically that is it. Left foot on the brake, specialist timing gear there, ready to record everything. Floor the throttle, go. It's not the fastest off the line, but then, blimey, yeah, it balls, balls, and that's 60. That's 60, so easily. Once it's going, this thing is mental. Nought to 60 in 4.2 seconds. Hmm. Now I'm going to do the launch in the Seat Leon, but before I do, I want to see if you can guess what the difference will be between the two cars. So just click up there on the pop-out banner to have a go. While I do that, I'm going to explain how to put it into launch mode. It's very simple yet again. Press this button down here to go into Cupra mode. Put the stability control into sport mode. Put the gearbox into sport automatic. And then hold on the brake, throw the throttle, go. Oh, off the line. This seems a bit sharper than the Audi actually. But then it doesn't pull quite so strong, and that's 60 though, very, very quick. Let's see what I got. Here we go then. 0 to 60 in 4.4 seconds, so just 0.2 of a second between the two cars. So, did you guess correctly? No, I didn't. <laughs> I think it's fair to say that there really isn't that much between these two cars when it comes to performance. But it's a different matter when you're talking about the price. That is £38,000 and you're going to have to pay an extra £500 for that apt upgrade, which is well worth it, I reckon. This standard is £47,000, and this particular car has the upgraded sound and comfort package, which merely includes a B&O stereo and a reversing camera for £1,000. So, is it worth the extra cash? Does it look more expensive? Well, let's talk about the design of this RS3. So, to most people, it just looks like a normal A3 which is actually a good thing because it's a smart looking car. But those who know, 
know the difference is. You've got a sporty black grille, you've got RS badging down here, and Quattro written down here. A deeper front bumper with big air intakes as well. You've got LED headlights as standard. Down the sides, you've got some 19 inch alloy wheels, you've got upgraded RS brakes, there's some side skirts, the car obviously sits low to the ground because you've got lower sportier suspension. There's a discreet roof spoiler here as well. Once again, a deeper rear bumper with a fake diffuser, but I'll tell you what's not fake, thank God, the exhaust pipes, they're classic oval RS exhaust pipes, and I'll demonstrate them now with my kind of car wow, gun-like log of truth. Look at that, perfecto mundo. It passes the car wow, weird stick test. I'm also happy to report that this Cupra R has real exhaust pipes, and there's four of them all passing the car wow sticker truth. Look at that, brilliant. Also, this R version gets a carbon fiber rear diffuser, copper badging, there's obviously the R badge there, and the apt badge, because this one is tuned further. You've got a carbon fiber roof spoiler, looks pretty cool, and it's real. It's actually real carbon fiber, this is. There's some more carbon fiber here on the side skirts. Obviously, this car sits lower to the ground than the normal lay-on. You've got 19-inch alloy wheels, and they're unique on this car as well with the copper detailing on them. Look pretty smart. And you've got Brembo brakes as well for some added stopping power. At the front, you've got some more coppery badging there as well. You've got redesigned intakes over the normal Seat Land Cupra. It's just a bit more aggressive. And carbon fibre for the front splitter as well. I mean, for me, this car looks more overtly sporty than the Audi RS3. But which do you prefer? Click on the pop-out banner to cast your vote. Which do you think looks the best? There are some upgrades on the inside of the Cooper R to make it feel just as sporty as the outside, and it helps liven up the normal layon's rather dull-looking interior. So you have this copper detailing about the place and on the air vents, on the badging, the stitching on the steering wheel. I should point out the steering wheel is Alcantara, and it feels lovely to hold. So too does the gear selector, which has Alcantara on it as well. The dials, you get special Cooper dials, and you can change the view of it, as you can see all lovely it's very well kitted out as well so you get bucket seats as standard and you also get things like wireless charging it's a very well equipped car the sunroof that's standard as well also standard is this kind of fake carbon fiber material on the door which i'm going to call carbon failure i really don't like it much in contrast it's very hard to find anything to fault inside this RS3. It just does everything very well, and it's got a nice classy feel to it. So there's no fakery around the place. The door inlays a nice Alcantara. I like the fact that your RS steering wheel has Alcantara on it as well, although it doesn't go all the way around like on the Seat, which I do actually prefer. The gear selector is Alcantara again. You've got RS badging there. And just the general ambience and quality of the materials is better than in the Seat. What I am missing, though, is that panoramic roof. It does feel a bit dark in here. Another thing is you do have RS Sport seats, but they just don't hold your body as well as the standard seats you get in that Seat. You do get digital dials, and once again, you can then alter the view and how you want them to appear. Your main infotainment system is stuck up here on the dash, which seems slightly old-fashioned, but it is right in your direct eye light. And I like the way you can just press a button and it goes away. Then you can just actually use the digital dials for most of the car's functions, like your stereo and stuff like that. So all in all, I think this is a slightly nicer place to be. It just feels more expensive. In the back of the RS3, it doesn't feel any different at all to a normal A3. And that's a bit of a disappointment. And another thing that's a bit annoying is the fact that these rear seats aren't that sporty, so they don't hold you in place very well if your driver's getting carried away on a twisty road. This shiny leather means you just end up sliding about all over the place when they're cornering hard, so yeah, that could get on your nerves. What is different than the normal A3 is the RS's boot capacity because you only have 335 litres, which isn't massive. The normal car has 380 litres. Now, there's a reason for that. It's because in the normal car, you have some useful underfloor storage, but you don't on the RS for two reasons. One is the fact that you've got that bigger engine up front, so they've relocated the battery to the rear. Also, the boot well is actually shallower because underneath you have the differential for the four-wheel drive system. Being in this state, this land is obviously a lot more practical than that Audi RS3 Sportback. And you have 587 litres of space, including the room you've got under there. And even though it's got a rear differential, because this is four-wheel drive as well, it doesn't eat 
into the boot space. So this car's boot capacity is the same as the normal Leon ST. Now, if you have the hatchback version, obviously you have less boot capacity, but that car, the Leon Cupra R hatch, isn't all-wheel drive like this one is. The Leon is also more practical in the back seat than the Audi. So I think you've got a bit more physical space because the roof line isn't so sloping and that glass roof does just make it feel brighter back here. Also, you do have contoured rear sport seats and the fact that the inlays at Alcantara does grip you and hold you in place if the driver is getting a bit carried away, the only downside yet again is this horrible carbon failure on the doors. Mm, yeah, I don't like it. Now let's talk about fuel economy because it does matter. So both these cars weigh roughly the same. This is actually 1,530 kilos. That's 1,557 kilos. They've both got all wheel drive. They've both got seven speed dual clutch automatic gearboxes. But of course that's got a 2.5 litre engine. That's got a two litre. So you'd expect that to be slightly more fuel efficient. However, earlier today, we did a fuel economy test driving on a mixture of town roads and on the motorway. This averaged 31 miles per gallon and this averaged 31.7 miles per gallon. Anyway, that's enough about that. Let's compare how they drive. The thing I love about the Audi RS3 is that it is the ultimate sleeper car. So it's just a normal family hatchback, isn't it? Yep, all very respectable. But then let's say you suddenly need to overtake someone, then you put your foot down and this happens. It just absolutely flies. I mean, it's almost supercar quick it's just bonkers and i love it for that it just surprises people and yet when you back off again it's all nice and civilized and relaxed and it's actually a really easy car to live with every day so it's comfy over bumps this one hasn't even got the adaptive dampers if you have them fitted they're a thousand pounds by the way it's even more comfy over bumps but you don't absolutely need them it's quiet as well you just get a bit of noise from the large tires and that's about it it's a car you can do mile after mile in and feel very, very comfortable and quite smug about yourself because it's a nice looking, posh feeling car. Kind of makes you drive around like this. Now let's see what this RS3 is like on a twisty road. So I've got the kind of dynamic mode and that sharp at the throttle response and added weight to the steering. I've also got the stability in sport mode, so it's gonna give me a bit of slip. So it will move about underneath me, the car will, but it'll still gather me up if I get things badly wrong. So it actually goes pretty well, this thing, and the engine's great once it's spinning, but I have noticed that like lower down the rev range, when you put your foot down, it just seems a little bit soggy until it comes on song. If you start running wide in a corner, you can lift off the throttle and it will gradually tighten its line. The all-wheel drive system gives you plenty of grip when you're trying to fire out of a corner. Now, there is one thing about it, though, there's an ever so slight disconnect between what I'm feeling and what the car's actually doing. So I'm not fully trusting it. It just doesn't seem to quite bite into the road as much as I'd like it to. It's capable, it's good, and it's fun, but it's probably not quite as sporty as I'd like it to feel. I mean, really, I think this is a good eight tenths car. You can't really go full on balls out in it, it's just not quite sharp enough. Right, I've jumped out the Audi, I'm now in the Leon, I'm gonna go straight onto the twisted road because I wanna compare their handling back to back. I've got this car in Cupra mode, so full attack, so we've got added weight to the steering, sharper throttle response, but unlike with the Audi, because this has got adaptive dampers, they're now in a stiffer sporty setting and that just reduces the amount of lean you get in the corners. Also, this car is running minus two degrees of negative camber and all this means that you can just push this Seat a little bit harder through the bends than you can the Audi. You can also feel more what's going on beneath you through the chassis, how much grip you've got, the front and the back, the steering sharper as well, the brakes just have a little bit more feel, even the throttle response, when you first put your foot down it just seems to pick up a bit quicker than the Audi even though it doesn't have the ultimate outright power of that five cylinder engine. I also like the way the car just responds a little bit better to lifting off the throttle mid-corner. It just tightens its line slightly more than the Audi does. And all of this adds up to make a car that just gives you a bit more confidence, that's a little bit more fun, one that you want to and are willing to just push that little bit harder. I think it's a sportier car. It's more of a 9 tenths car than the Audi. 
and if I was regularly driving on twisty roads, this would be the one that I would have. It's just a bit more fun. But what about for normal everyday life? The realities of driving your car to work and back and up and down the motorway while well, put into comfort mode, the damper's slacken off. So it's actually quite comfy, but it's just a little bit noisier than the Audi. It's not quite as relaxing as just traveling. Also, while the engine does respond well when you put your foot down, it doesn't have that utterly bonkers performance at the top end of the Audi, which means it can pretty much blast past anyone. It's still quick though, but if I'm spending a lot of time in traffic or just around town or just generally commuting, I would rather be sat in the Audi. It's a little bit more comfortable and a little bit more luxurious. Plus, it's an Audi and not a Seat. There, I said it, I'm a brand snob, but I bet most of you are too. So then, what's my final verdict? Well, actually, like I said at the beginning of the video, that's less important today. What I want to know is your verdict, so click up there on the pop-out banner to vote which car you would have, this Audi or the Seat. And while you're deciding, I'm going to say that I personally would take the Audi. Yes, it's more money, but that five-cylinder engine is just worth it. So, what did you pick? What did you pick? Oh, I can't wait to find out. I can't actually do it in this video. I'll have to look later. But thanks for taking part. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, talk.